Leonard W. Boyd III, and we're live broadcasting him today. So before we start, I'd like to introduce myself, the host, Natalie Ann Foy. Also, um, as some of you know who are watching this video, his daughter. So, Len, is there anything you'd like to say before you start? Well, thank you for introducing yourself to our audience. This is You're our welcome. second installment. Uh, we are producing and broadcasting a series of videos to tell uh, members of the uh, listening public uh, and people who may be um, interested in the possibility of retaining my services a little bit more about our office and about myself and just basically what we have to offer clients. Okay, so you want to start with the first question? Sure, I think that we're just going to tackle one subject today, so this, this, may not be, this video may not be as long as our prior video, but I think we were just going to tackle one subject today, but yes. Okay, so um, please explain the kinds of legal services you offer clients in Massachusetts. I'm glad you asked me that. Um, so, the practice of law, or, or I should say the practice of real estate law, is a little bit different everywhere. It's obviously significantly different in California than, let's say, on the East Coast or even in the Northeast. So, and what we find is within New England, the, the real estate uh, practice, uh, the legal practice of real estate can be different even between two states. And, and nowhere is that, are those differences um, on display to the degree that they are between, say, the state of New Hampshire and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. However, for the purposes of this video, we're going to focus our attention on the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So Massachusetts is popularly known as what is called an attorney state for the purposes of, a real, of the practice of real estate. And what that means is that unlike other states, which have seen title companies sort of take over the process of real estate transactions, in Massachusetts, that process is still very much controlled by attorneys, by members of the Massachusetts State Bar. So what that means is that if you are buying or selling real estate in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, you would do well to have the services of a qualified real estate attorney. And what that means is that if you are interested in purchasing or selling real estate, please contact my office uh, for a free consultation so that we can not only discuss the services that you may be in need of, but I can also offer you some insight and some tips and I can uh, provide you with uh, our pricing, which is obviously very important to most people. But at any rate, uh, let's break this down, if we can, between, say, buyers, sellers, and lenders. The three circumstances under which you may need the services of a quali qualified real estate attorney. So, if you are buying real estate in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and that includes not only the Boston area, Western Massachusetts, Cape and the Islands, Metro West, South Shore, um, Worcester area, my office is has a statewide practice, which means that we handle real estate transactions throughout the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So if you are the buyer of real estate, what you will find is that once you have identified a piece of real estate that you would like to purchase and you have made an offer, the next step will be, and you have conducted a home inspection, the next step will be for you to enter into what is called a purchase and sales agreement which is basically a contract to buy real estate. At that point, you probably should be in touch with a real estate attorney, like myself, to assist you in reviewing the document, and making sure that it's in your best interests, that you are fully protected under it before you sign it. If you are selling real estate in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, you will need an attorney not only to assist you with the purchase and sales agreement, which again is a real estate contract, but also preparing your deed, and we'll probably cover deeds in a different video, but a deed is a legal document which conveys ownership in real estate from a seller to a buyer. And in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, we utilize what are called quitclaim deeds, for the most part, by and large, with rare exceptions. Um, so. Uh, 
those, uh, those are the circumstances concerning buyers and sellers of real estate. The final circumstance, but certainly one that's worthy of mention, would be um, representing the lender in a real estate transaction. So, if you are buying real estate and you are not paying cash, but you are in fact utilizing a bank or a credit union or a mortgage company or a mortgage broker um, or a private lender, if you are utilizing any one of those sources for the financing of the property that you are purchasing, then, the, the, then a, an attorney would likely represent the lender as well. Now, I don't want this to get too complicated. I prefer to keep it simple. Please contact my office if you have any questions. But under most circumstances, it's acceptable for one lawyer to represent not only the buyer, but also the buyer's lender in a real estate transaction. And it happens all the time. Under other circumstances, the buyer will have their own attorney. The lender will have their own attorney. The lender's attorney is typically the closing attorney for the purpose of most real estate transactions, which means that if you are the purchaser of real estate and you are paying cash, your attorney would not only be your personal counsel, but would also be the closing attorney. If you are utilizing financing, mortgage financing, to purchase the property, then another attorney would be representing the lender, and that attorney would be the closing attorney. Again, this can be very confusing. And I think we've already covered in detail um, the role of an attorney representing a seller in a real estate transaction. So it's not unusual in a real estate transaction to have at least two, sometimes three attorneys involved. One representing the buyer, one representing the seller, and sometimes different lawyers representing the buyer and the buyer's lender. So what that should say to you, and when I say you, I mean people who are watching this video, is that you would be um, well advised to retain an attorney before either purchasing or selling real estate in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I have been practicing law for almost 20 years. I've been admitted to practice law in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts since approximately 1998, which isn't quite 20 years, but almost. Um, roughly half of my practice consists of Massachusetts-based real estate transactions, notwithstanding that my office is located in New Hampshire, on the border in Nashua, New Hampshire. So in closing, what I would say to anyone watching this video is if you are interested in working with a qualified, energetic, um, experienced real estate attorney who puts his clients first, then I hope you will consider contacting my office. For those interested in working with me or in obtaining a free consultation, please reach out to my firm. You can email me at lfoy at foylawoffice.com or you could call my phone number, which is area code 603-598-4030. Please look me up on the World Wide Web. My web address is www.foylawoffice.com. I hope to hear from you. I wish you uh, good luck, certainly, in any purchase or sale of real estate that you may be contemplating. And nothing would make me happier than to have the opportunity to assist you with it. Well said. So that's all you like to say? I think that's all for now. So this is the second installment mm -hmm. uh, in our ongoing uh, series of the importance of utilizing an experienced real estate attorney when buying or selling real estate. Brought to you by Leonard Foy, the attorney, and his able assistant, Natalie Foy, also his daughter. That's me. Well, so you, we will be having more videos. So if you have any questions, um, please feel free to ask my dad, Len, um, on his website. So that's all for today. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching this video.